Well, I'm John Dunham, and I've been uh, a professional woodworker for nearly 50 years. Um, I've been started out, um, I went to Virginia Commonwealth University, studied furniture design, did craft fairs for until about 1990, and then I went, I moved down to Columbia County where I worked for Sotheby's um, for 11 years, and since 2000 I've been uh, self-employed, um, sometimes working with other craftspeople that also work at some of these. Um, I've gotten into inlay, and I've, I've done quite a few pieces of inlay. They seem to be getting more and more complicated, but uh, I thought I would show you just basically um, what's involved. The basic idea of, of cutting the pieces is to make them fit really tight together um, and to build up these um, pictures, if you will. Um, I just uh, attached a couple pieces of wood together, a piece of walnut and a piece of yellow heart. Um, drew a shape on here just to show you um, basically what happens. I have a scroll saw with a, a 3 elves saw blade, which is really thin. You can, uh, can't even see the teeth. You have to feel which way they're going with your finger. Um, but anyway, it, the, the table is set about a 45, uh, 4 degree angle to the right. And what this does is it tapers the cut as you're cutting it out so that when you put the piece, you join the pieces together, they come out really tight together. So there's no, there's the width of the blade disappears. Uh, this is kind of slow. Okay, you can cut any any shape and okay the because the it's only glued at the ends here the and I can take a a knife hopefully and just break that glue joint. So that's a much tighter joint. If this is a if this is actually a piece of that I'm going to use, just dab a little glue on the edges. Press that together, and that will stiffen up very shortly. So that's the base. That's the basic process of getting these pieces to fit together. Um, I'm going to make a, a monarch butterfly here, and I just have a picture from, uh, I just took off the internet, but you can get it off a book, take the pictures yourself. I've done it a number of times with pictures I've taken. I try to, I try to do the butterflies uh, their life size, so usually I have to adjust the, the size of them. So I use this picture. I, with uh, going to Staples or somewhere, I reduce it to the correct size, and I usually make a couple copies of it. Okay, so um, what I use is just um, a glue stick, just a good time of year to get it from school supplies. It's good because it's water soluble and you can uh, clean, clean the surface off of the glue and piece of the paper. Uh, let's see. 
Okay, so I'm going to glue this down onto uh, so I'm shaking here. This piece of ebony. Okay, I've cut, I've sliced uh, some ebony. It's a little less than an eighth of an inch thick. Okay, and I have some yellow heart, which we'll, we will use for this part. Okay, and we can use cherry for the, the more orange. Okay, we've got more yellow up here. And then the white, um, we'll use holly. Okay, so we've got this glue down here. Now we're going to tack these two uh, pieces of wood together. The black on top. One thing nice about the butterflies is the black surrounds the whole thing. Okay, uh, there are other butterflies that do the same thing, like tiger swallowtails, um, black swallowtails. Um, and it makes it really easy because some other, th most other things, um, you end up cutting off half of your picture and you have to keep, you know, attaching, you know, attaching new pictures, you know, you have to index it on there to get it just right so you get, you know, go on to the next step. With this I can do the whole thing with just one, uh, one, one Xerox copy. I like to, uh, okay, I'll put a little dab in this of glue, just a little one, in the three corners, hopefully away from where it's actually going to be, and where we're actually going to use, use it. So when we finally cut out the shape, it should come apart. Okay, so now I've got I've got this glued together. Um, it's ready to cut out the yellow parts down here. The first thing I have to do is drill a hole to get the blade through. Went down to hardware store in Hudson and brought a blade, and I told him I wanted to get the smallest blade I could that that would go through the holes, and they gave me. And they sold me a number 72 drill bit, which is that. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to drill, drill a hole. I'll do it on the somewhere on the edge where it won't show. the hole. <laughs> right there. <laughs> okay, so now we got to thread this through the, thread, thread the blade through. If you go the wrong way, <laughs> the pieces don't stick together at all.
Okay, so I've got that piece cut out. I've got a yellow one, and I've got a black one. The black one is garbage. Okay, now I'm going to glue this in. Each time we take one, take one of these shapes out, we'll glue it in so that there's never a uh, even though there's the black is really narrow, it never is really fragile because it's always glued together. Now, I don't know what this thing is, but I found it, and it's great for just pressing it down into the hole where it should be tight. Okay, so we've got one of those shapes. It's going to be yellow, and we will do the rest of those. But to make it short, I've got a, an, another one that I've... Okay, so we, so we, have, we have the yellow done. I've got a yellow, couple of yellow spots up here, and I've got all these down here. In the back, you can see... I've just pushed them all down through, but they're all glued solid together. When we're all done, this will be like an eighth of an inch thick and, and really quite strong. Much better in, when you do veneer, um, it would be so thin, it'd be really flimsy and easy to break. Okay, so I went, I, I finished that. I would, again, take take a knife and, and break uh, break this off from the back sometimes you have to that glued a little too tight okay then all that comes off and you've got that on the back and I now take a piece of, of cherry and glue that on a piece of cherry, and I would go to these spaces and do the same thing. And then with the the white spots, um, those are really two. A few of those you can get. You can get the, like this one and this one, but most of these are so small that you just you. They're, they're just too difficult. So what I've done is taken um, drill bits that are approximately the same size and drilled them out and I took strips of strips of holly and kind of whittled them down till they till I can poke them in the hole and glue them in. Okay, and then you can, you know, cut them off. So, we end up with, okay, we have, looks something like this with all the, the dots, right, from the, my picture, right, the, the, most of the dots anyway, I don't usually get quite as many but anyway, I, I also earlier made uh, this piece of picture of a zinnia. Actually, that was from a picture I took in, in our garden. And to make this uh, butterfly look like it's sitting on the flower, then I can, I can, I, I obviously glued those together, and I can cut the, um, Cut that butterfly out, and it will fit right in. Now, okay. Now I can break this off.
and this. And we can glue that together and um, finish cutting. I can cut out the, you know, the shape of the wing. The, as far as the legs and the antenna, those are such little lines. What I usually do is I cheat and use a fine sharpie. Okay, so what I what I do now, what I would do next is whatever I'm making, I would uh, trace around this with a really sharp pencil, and I would pick the maybe the thinnest. If there's a thin spot, I would. Um, set the the blade of your router so that it was um, you know the, the depth of your thinnest spot and route out as close as you can with a router um, an op uh, depression for this to fit into and then I would go back with the carving tool and um, make it really fit tight. Now one thing I've done is you see on the on this where um, where you have this really sharp cut here that would be really hard to to get with a with a router so what I did is I laid it onto a piece of whatever what I was using for a background and made I, I went in you know into each one of these and cut a piece that would fit. So now I've got a much simpler shape um, to, to carve out. Wait, this is a piece of yellow heart again, and this is a piece of purple heart. So this is a piece that I had done earlier. Um, and this is what it would look like after it was glued in. It's it's raised and uh, got glue all over it. Um, when I first started, it was all with clamps. I used uh, put some Celotex on top of it because it's compressible, and um, you know put a piece of plywood on the back and a plywood on the top with a piece of Celotex on top of the picture and just clamp the heck out of it. Um, I now have a vacuum bag that uses air pressure uh, you know, to cl clamp the pieces together. And what I would do from here is take a, a cabinet scraper and scrape that all down flush. Okay. Okay, so there's our butterfly. Um, one thing, one thing we can do is to show the uh, separation between the petals of the flower. We can just cut, just cut a groove. We don't even have to take any wood away, but these will show up when we put finish on it. And um, the, the leaves, what I did is I, you can probably, 
maybe you see that that's uh, curly maple. The curls would follow the veins of the, of the leaf. And what we can do is Well, first of all, here, this is a piece of curly maple, and I have some, okay, a lot of colors, there's no wood, the right color, like there's no real good green. But I have got some water-soluble aniline dye, and that will make the grain of the, of the wood show up. So we can paint some of this on our leaves. And it will make those I'm not doing a very careful job here. And just get an idea what that, the colors of that are going to look like when it's got a finish on it. This is alcohol, just denatured alcohol. You can see that brings the color right out. That, that would be the color that it would look with a finish on it. The last thing I would do is maybe draw with a Sharpie the antenna and the legs and put that on a piece of furniture or whatever. Okay.